Well, I'm sure you've all heard by now, but we have some new medium format film options to choose from with Kentmere releasing their Pan 400 and 100 in 120 format last week, which is very exciting news. And I was able to get my hands on some of this a couple months back and just work with it a bit. So I wanted to make this video today just to uh, dig into the specifics a little bit, share my images and my thoughts on how this performs, and then also just talk about what I think this has got to be the new go-to budget film. Okay, so what are these all about? Obviously, these aren't brand new films. They've been available in 35 millimeter for a while now, but I'd actually never worked with Kentmere. And just reading Ilford's website info and also the release, these sound very, very similar to HP5 and FP4. So Ilford is saying the 400 draws many attributes from the Ilford stocks, such as HP5, and has a wide exposure latitude. And they say the 100 draws attributes from the FP4 with a little less grain and a touch more contrast compared to the 400. So to me, it sounds like these are almost like lesser versions of HP5 and FP4, but at a slightly cheaper price point, which sounds pretty appealing. So for a long time, Fomapan was kind of the go-to option if you're looking for a more affordable black and white film, but it seems like Kentmere may take that spot. Um, obviously, this is gonna all depend on where you live and where you purchase your film from. But from the research I did, Kentmere was consistently coming in as the most affordable or tied for it with Foma uh, here in the UK, anywhere from like four pounds 75 to five pound per roll. And in comparison, the Ilford Plus films are anywhere from six pounds to seven pounds per roll, depending on where you buy them. So really cool to see that. But, you know, being from Ilford, like why are these cheaper and what exactly is the difference? So I did come across an Instagram post from Ilford and replying to a comment, they mentioned that one of the reasons this is cheaper is because the Kentmere films contain less silver and don't have quite as wide of an exposure latitude compared to the Ilford equivalents. But then on their website, they're saying that these films draw a lot of attributes from the Ilford films, such as wide exposure latitude. So, um, you know, I'm sure these aren't as good as the Plus films, but from my initial test, they seem to hold up really well. So um, we'll dive into some images now. We're gonna look at a few different things. So to kick this off, I'll start by saying that Overall, I was very satisfied with the images that I was able to create using both of these Kentmere films. And as expected, it felt very familiar to the look that I'm getting from HP5 and FP4. And I'm sure with more use, I'll learn more about like specific Kentmere film characteristics and potential limitations. Uh, but right away, I was very happy and quite impressed. Both the 100 and the 400 have like a nice classic look, wide range of tones, and a lot of room for editing afterwards and post, something that's really important to me. You know, there isn't too heavy of a look baked in. And I wanna dive into the look a little bit deeper. Obviously the images that were just up on the screen were edited versions. So I wanna show you a couple examples of how these came into the scanning software with zero tweaks whatsoever. Okay, so first up we have the 400 speed and we'll go ahead and we'll just convert this one here. And as you'll see, this is how it's coming through Negative Lab Pro with no other adjustments whatsoever. And uh, it looks nice, it looks very, familiar to what I'm used to seeing with HP5. My initial reaction with these results is that they are very HP5-ish. So, you know, just a wide range of tones, not too heavy of a look baked in, and overall it's just, yeah, a lot of room to work with this one. And in comparison, this one is the 100 speed. We'll go ahead and convert this. And as you can see, again, very similar look to the 400, maybe a touch more contrast. Uh, these weren't shot at an identical time of day, but it is same camera, same lens, same settings, tripod and stuff like that, and very similar conditions. But the 100 looks nice as well. Maybe just a little bit more contrast in these deep shadows. If we go ahead and we take the 400 and put it on the left, and we go and we make sure we're on the 100 on the right, yeah, both of these look very, 
very similar to one another. So really cool to see that. We'll jump back out, we'll look at two more examples. So this one right here, this is the 400. I'll go ahead and convert this. So again, standard settings. Obviously you can make this look however you want, but just coming through uh, into Negative Lab Pro like this, 400 speed again, looks great. You know, a lot of room to work with this file, a lot of flexibility. And uh, you know, it's not like the most contrasty image out there, which is great and which is something that I prefer, but still get a nice kind of classic look to it. And then one more, this is the 100 speed again. This is a bright sunny day with a nice bright sky. Go ahead and save that. And yeah, it looks it looks great. Both of these films look very, very similar to me. And obviously Ilford's saying a little bit more contrast with the 100, but that is gonna vary so much if you're scanning your images. Obviously contrast is something that can be tweaked quite a bit as long as it's not baked too much into uh, the film that you use. Uh, so overall, great look from both of these and I would be very happy using either. Like I said, they remind me quite a bit of the Ilford Plus equivalent. So yeah, I was happy to see this. Okay, so next up we're gonna look at uh, sharpness and grain. We'll do this very quickly. Uh, we'll go back to this first image again and this one right here is the 400 speed. And if we go into 100%, uh, you'll see very kind of predictable. This is what you would expect with this 400 speed film. You know, it's got a decent amount of grain, but uh, it's quite pleasing in my opinion. Definitely a little bit heavier in the midtones. And then sharpness, if we go down to the foreground here, you know, tons of detail. I don't think this film is gonna have any issues uh, providing like a nice sharp image once scanned. So it looks great. And then in comparison, this is the 100. These are both uh, edited files, so these aren't gonna look exactly like the first ones, but if we go into 100% up here, you'll see definitely less uh, grain, but for 100 speed film, uh, it does still have a decent amount of it, but quite a bit less than the 400. And then if we go down to the foreground here, you'll see obviously the 100 speed as well, looks great. Nice and sharp, plenty of detail. And personally, this 100 speed, uh, I really like. I could see myself shooting this for landscapes quite a bit. Okay, and then the last thing I wanna talk about is flexibility. Like I said, I didn't do an exposure test or any specifics, but I did work with this film in some like pretty difficult situations where I thought that I would maybe start to see some of its limitations and uh, I was quite surprised. So one image in particular that I wanna show you is this one. This was obviously a really high contrast scene. The sun was rising. This sky back here was pure sun. It was a backlit scene. And in this moment, the entire foreground was in the shadows. And this negative was a little bit thin in the shadow areas, but I thought for sure I was gonna see uh, some issues when I scanned this. And as you can see, it, I was impressed. It looks really nice. Uh, the highlight areas uh, still look really good considering how bright those areas were. And there is a little bit more grain showing in the shadow areas. The negative was a little bit more thin there and I obviously raised it up in post after scanning. But overall, considering this situation, uh, I was impressed to see that this film held up just fine uh, considering this was a, like a really difficult scenario with a high contrast range. Uh, in comparison, this is HP5 shot at the exact same time on large format. Uh, obviously the sun was out a little more, kind of getting flared and a little more light on the foreground, but you know, very similar in terms of how the sky and those bright highlight areas were rendered. This is obviously a larger format as well. But you know, budget film, you think you're gonna see these drastically different uh, looks from them, but it held up very well. And then the 100, you know, this is obviously a different time of day, but still this really bright sky back here, no issues with the highlights, they still look fine. And then the shadow area uh, on the slate building where it's these deep kind of shadows and deep dark areas and it looks good. So I will be curious to do an exposure test and really see where this film starts to kind of fall behind. But you know, just from these initial results, I would feel very comfortable working with it uh, in a lot of different lighting conditions. <laughs> So overall, you know, from these initial results, I gotta say I'm really impressed. And I only shot six rolls of this stuff, so lots to learn still, but uh, yeah, there's nothing I could really complain about, especially when you consider uh, how much these cost. And in the past, Foma Pan 400 was kind of my go-to budget film. I still really do enjoy it, but 
it definitely has more of a look to it. You know, it's a little grainier, the highlights kind of bloom, contrast is a little more harsh. And for me personally, if I'm doing any work that's gonna be for a project, I like to work with a film that has kind of more flexibility where I can kind of tweak the look in post and nothing's gonna be baked in too strong right from the start. So there is a lot of appeal to me with these. And then every now and then as well with the Foma pan, I would run into like strange quality and consistency issues where there'd be like marks on the negative or stuff like that. So I think it is really cool to have a cheaper option from a company like Ilford where you can just feel like really confident that the quality and the consistency is always gonna be there. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video and that it gives you like a overall feel for how the new Kent mirror performs in 120. And I hope to have some other videos out about this in the future, just diving a little deeper into uh, exposure and comparisons and stuff like that. Um, Anyways, that's it. As always, just want to say thank you for watching and I will see you next week.